Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I barely slept at all in the last month or so. I'm haunted by all the things I did during high school and college. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time and start all over again. Kind of a fresh start. Reboot myself, so to speak. But on the other hand, I'm worried if I did that, everybody would hate me even more than they already do. Getting with the times. I will never do such a thing. What do you do when you're living in the modern world we live in today? Give up on life. It's quite simple, really. People give up all the time. We as human beings have three rights, and everybody seems to be leaning more and more towards that their third right these days. And the entertainment industry is doing the same thing because they're giving up on creating new creative shit and just rehashing that old shit that worked in the past and just making it worse. Reboots are the hip thing to not give a fuck about these days, and they're being applied to everything nowadays. Movies, TV shows, video games, candies, everything. Reboots definitely have merit, and they do make sense from a business perspective, but lots of people just don't seem to like them. And that's because a lot of reboots are not done correctly at all. In my opinion, a reboot is done right when it stays true to what made the original series great in the first place, and continues to do that in order to appeal to new and returning fans alike. When a show is popular and has a fan base, there's obviously a reason why the fan base exists in the first place. If a reboot is done and just feels completely different from the original show, it just comes off as bullshit. There are two types of reboots, the ones that actually have thought put into them and really feel like the same old show, just with a slightly new feel. And then there's the others. So today, we'll be taking a look at a handful of Nickelodeon reboots and see which ones were done well and which ones weren't. However, there is something I have to say. I haven't watched enough of most of these reboots to form an actual opinion on them, so most of these are just first impressions, not full on reviews. Maybe I'll look at them more in depth in the future, but we'll cross that bridge when we burn it. With that out of the way, let's start this off with the best of today's reboots because I have a lot of complaining to do. That reboot is the iCarly revival on Paramount+. Plus. iCarly was a show about a group of teenagers creating their own web show. That series was very popular because there are a lot of interesting, unique, and memorable characters like Carly, Sam, Freddy, Spencer, and Gibby, and a lot of funny, well-paced episodes. The web show, however, is really what made the show stand out. When we jump to the reboot, Sam and Gibby are nowhere to be seen, but we still have Carly, Freddy, and Spencer. Two new main characters named Harper and Millicent are introduced, and they definitely have their fans. I feel like this reboot is done well for the most part, because that level of comedy in the writing of the original series is still very much present in the reboot. Almost as if the writers of the reboot were fans that grew up with the original series and understood what made it funny in the first place. It also helps that Freddy and Spencer are such strong characters and they are still very in character in the revival. I watched just about every episode in the reboot and I do like it. The reboot really feels like the original show, just with the characters aged up and experiencing their lives much later after the original series when they were still in high school. The biggest drawback of the reboot that I've seen discussed is how the reboot has significantly less focus on the web show itself and more focus on the characters' lives. I can completely understand that, but I'm also a little indifferent to this change. Since the characters are grown up now, it makes sense to focus on more adult topics because that's their next stage in life. So while I sympathize with how people feel about this change, I still don't have that big of an issue with it. However, there is something that I personally cannot get over. It's probably minor in the grand scheme of things, but there's definitely some technical dialogue in the reboot that was not present in the original series, like this word that I'm covering up right now. That kind of dialogue alone will alienate any human being. I should know. Also, as of 2022, one episode in each of the two seasons out during this time has had a character name drop what is not only the bane of my existence, but the worst thing ever invented on earth, and that alone breaks me just when I hear that word be said, and I won't be able to overlook it. And I don't know why this is the case. There must be something I missed, so it's time to go back on the internet and do further research. Okay, let's see, here we are. Former Nickelodeon executive contacted Marina Cosgrove, yada yada yada, everybody except Janet McCurdy was on board. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. Wait, I missed something. 
I don't know what that is, but it has the word hype. So it kind of sounds like something a 15 year old would call himself when he goes out to the parking lot and gets high during lunch at school. Well, that explains where the technical dialogue was coming from. But on the other hand, the fact that that was the inspiration for where the reboot came from in the first place, other than the obvious of course, that just makes me feel betrayed. I mean, just why is it necessary to name drop something that just reminds me that the planet Earth is slowly crumbling? Like, why? I mean, the fact that they mentioned <coughs> too? I mean, even murderers are human beings compared to <coughs> And yet the show still has to talk about that modern day sh that alienates human beings such as myself? Really? And another thing. Hello? Get down here. What? Why? Now. Okay. Hey, Toby. That's Mr. Toby to you. You didn't have to call. My door wasn't locked. Never mind that. I heard what you said. what I just say? The door wasn't locked? No, you said that those aren't human beings compared to murderers. Oh, yeah, I did say that. So? So? So why the f*** did you say that? Hey, at least murderers say things that make sense. And from what I've seen, they make pretty good arguments too. Have you ever won an argument against a murderer? Well, no, but... That's what I thought. The things that say are so annoying and nonsensical, I'm too bored to even be bothered to yawn. Okay, what kind of gank are you? I may be a gank, but even ganks are human beings. Okay, you're an idiot. Hey, I'll have you know that I took the SATs in high school. Oh, really? What'd you get on those SATs? Oh, a high score. Uh, it is so hard to talk to you! So that's what it feels like to be called a gang. Now where was I? Oh right. With all those negatives I just went over, it would be amazing if the upcoming season 3 would get rid of all that and focus more on the actual funny sh But I'm not getting my hopes up for that. Looks like even the best reboot ended its discussion on a negative note. Moving on, let's talk about the first major reboot that kicked off this Nickelodeon reboot trend, the All That Revival. All That was a sketch comedy show from the 90s that starred kids and was basically the Nickelodeon version of Saturday Night Live. The show originally had 10 seasons. Technically speaking, this is All That's second reboot. The show's first six seasons, which ran from 1994 to 2000, are considered the best of the series, and I like to call them the classic series. Seasons 7 through 10 came out in 2002 to 2005 and are considered weaker than seasons 1 through 6. I haven't seen enough of seasons 7 to 10 to form a full opinion, but I thought they were fine enough, but not as good as seasons 1 through 6. Brian Robbins, the current president of Nickelodeon, worked on all that back in the day and was the first reboot that he really wanted to make after he became president. The reboot was announced in February in 2019 alongside Spongebob spin-offs. It premiered in June 2019 and I honestly wanted to try to watch it but I just couldn't bring myself to do so. I am a big fan of the classic series and even though I knew that a few of the cast members from the classic series were returning, I also didn't think that this would have been a good thing. I tried to watch a couple episodes but I only watched two or three before giving up. Everything I saw was more or less just a rip off of something the classic series did perfectly. For example, this sketch about talking babies was a rip off of a season 6 skit called Baby Chad and Marie Kiddo is just a shameless rip off of Repair Man 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 Man. Back in the day, all that had great comedy and acting, and the modern day season 11 doesn't even try to match that same kind of spirit that made the classic series so great in the first place. And I also hate to bring this up again, but there was even a scene from an episode of All That which mentioned the same thing that the iCarly revival name dropped. Oh my god, are you kidding me? That is two for two now. Why do they keep doing this? <sighs> okay, I need to calm down. And there's only one way I know how to do that. Hey! 
Hey all you people, and I'm so excited because today I finally get to talk about something that I've been wanting to talk about since 1997. What not to talk about on TV. TV writers, listen up. It's definitely hard to come up with good ideas for TV episodes, especially since all the good TV shows and all the good ideas for TV show episodes have already been done up to this point. So if you're a writer and you need something to talk about on a TV show, my best recommendation is... For the love of God, anything but that. Ah, <sighs> that feels better. I just don't understand why both reboots I've talked about so far have to have no integrity in order to keep people's attention. I'm a human being, alright? If there's two things I don't care about, it's my mental health and... <laughs> Moving on, the next reboot is one that doesn't deserve an introduction. The Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Odder. I don't feel like I really need to go on about why it sucks ass because everybody else already has, but I'll give a brief explanation. The Fairly Odd Parents was a show about a 10 year old kid who had fairy godparents because his life was miserable. The show ended in 2017 after a horrendous season 10. The reboot became a live action version of the original series. It's basically a shell of the original show and does not even stay remotely true to what made the original Fairly Odd Parents great in the first place. It's also not the Fairly Odd Parents. It's basically Nickelodeon's warped with Cosmo and Wanda squirted into it. Now that I've gone over three live action reboots, it's finally time to talk about an animated reboot, the Rugrats revival. Rugrats was a show about talking babies, and it was one of the original three Nicktoons that debuted in 1991 when Nickelodeon first started animation. The series was the most popular of the three original Nicktoons and lasted the longest out of those three from 1991 to 2004. It was very cute and charming, explored the life of talking babies when the parents weren't looking. When the reboot came out in 2021, it started off on Paramount Plus, and it's animated in CGI, which is quite different to the traditional 2D animation of the original show. And the CGI animation of the Rugrats reboot takes away most, if not all, the charm the original series had in my opinion. Several of the characters are fully voiced by their original voice actors, which I feel is awesome. However, Chucky Finster wasn't voiced by his original voice actor, Christine Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh, I don't know, whatever, because she passed away in December 2014, so that makes sense, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same. Of course, this reboot uses so much modern technology, like smartphone filters and tablets. Why am I not surprised? However, that is not my biggest gripe. What bugs me the most is that so much of the lore and continuity from the original is just retcon for seemingly no reason. For example, Kimmy, who debuted in the movie Rugrats in Paris, debuted after Dill, who appeared in the Rugrats movie. In the reboot, Kimmy appears, but Dill is nowhere to be seen, implying that Dill doesn't exist yet. The main house that the series takes place in is Stu and Dee Dee's house, but in the reboot, it's Grandpa Lou's house and Stu and Dee Dee are moving in with Lou. But the biggest retcon that seems to upset fans the most is the reason Nickelodeon's been losing viewers since 2017. In the original series, Betty DeVille, Phil and Lil's mom, is a married lady to her husband Howard. In the reboot, they made her single and lesbian, and Howard DeVille is nowhere to be seen. And that just makes me ask how Phil and Lil were even fetuses in the first place. To be fair, for all I know, they may have given an explanation for that in the reboot, but I haven't seen most of it, so who am I to talk? If there's no explanation, then of course they can't be bothered, but if there is, then just ignore what I said. But I'm still pissed beyond belief that they did this in the first place. So therefore, while the Rugrats reboot can help itself and uses modern technology, the biggest issue in my opinion is changing the history and lore of the original series to make this reboot. Which is also why I hate the Spongebob spinoffs as well. After all that, what did we learn today? We learned that while reboots can make sense from a business perspective, but they only work if they're done right. Of course, reboots do seem like the result of companies not wanting to try with new stuff and just bring back old stuff. That's because they are. A lot of reboots just end up falling flat because a lot of companies either don't know how to do a reboot right, or they just don't care and want to make money based off nostalgia. And almost all reboots these days end up making your average human being cringe because they force in the culture of this trash decade just to remind me that the world can't be redeemed. 
While I do feel that reboots can be done well, I just wish there wasn't such a huge focus on them these days. Every single reboot that we just talked about has at least one major drawback that makes it either worse than the original and or completely and utterly pointless in the grand scheme of things. And I'm sorry, but I don't even know if I'll be able to watch the iCarly reboot the same way ever again now that I know what the inspiration was for that reboot in the first place. Other than the obvious. I've never been this angry before, and I don't know how to handle myself. I'm so furious right now, I could just... Ooh, clean dishes. Fun fact, it's more efficient to clean dishes this way. That way, you can get your chores done and complain about the state of the world at the same time. <clears throat> Humanity. See? Ooh, they're done. All right, to-do list. All right, complain about reboots, did that. Clean dishes, did that. Bitch about humanity, did that. Huh, I got everything done today. And I have some spare time too. Later that night. <laughs> oh, I love the classics. Oh, today was a pretty productive day. I got my chores done, and I had some spare time. Well, I guess there's only one thing left to say now. Fuck reboots. You're welcome.